Hi, this is a head to toe assessment for Rasmussen University's physical assessment class. The head to toe assessment done in this video may not match what your instructor or your school has asked you to do. Therefore, it's very important to make sure you follow your basic guidelines. The basic head to toe assessment is typically used for new patient intakes, uh, yearly physicals, sports physicals, or job clearances. So let's get started. Knock. Come in. Hi, my name's Hannah. I'm your nurse today. Are we doing a physical assessment? We are. Awesome. Uh, what's this physical assessment for? My new job. Awesome. What's your new job? I'm a truck driver. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to be doing my hand hygiene. I'm going to be providing my patient with privacy. And then I'm also going to be gathering my supplies. I'll need my stethoscope, a pen light, a tongue depressor, a wisp of cotton, and then anything for my vital signs. Um, I'm also going to perform a general survey prior to actually assessing the patient. My general survey observations are that my patient is in no acute distress. He is tracking me as I enter the room. He is um, responding to my questions appropriately. He appears to be his age. He, his skin tone matches his ethnic background. He appears to be well nourished, well groomed, and dressed appropriately for the winter or the weather. And then he is um, at ease and comfortable talking to me. Uh, can I get your name and date of birth? Troy Hoskins, born April 1st, 1987. I will confirm that with either his wristband or what I have in my PCR system. And what year is it, Mr. Hoskins? 2020. Awesome. My patient is a and O times four. He's aware of his event or person, place, um, event, and time. Mr. Hoskins, do you have any allergies? No. Awesome. And then on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being the worst pain in your life, zero being no pain, do you have any pain today? Zero. Awesome. Okay. And in healthcare setting, I would typically take my patient's vital signs. My vital signs include his height and weight, his, um, excuse me, his measurements and vital signs. So measurements would include his height and weight, um, his blood pressure, his pulse, pulse, his oxygen saturation, his temperature, um, respirations, and pulse. We're going to first start checking his skin, hair, nails. When I'm checking his um, entire body, I want to note that throughout this entire assessment, I will be checking for any skin abnormalities, whether it's hair distribution issues, lesions, ulcers, cyanosis, jaundice, rashes, itching, um, or wounds, okay? So to begin with, we're gonna check his skin. So his hands or his skin looks to be um, even in color. It's warm pink and dry. His capillary refill is two plus. No signs of edema. All right. And then his hair is evenly distributed. No lumps, sores, lesions. All right. And then we're gonna check his lymph nodes. We have our parotid, the preauricular, the postauricular, post occipital, excuse me, occipital, and then we move our way forward and then down. And let me know if anything is tender or in pain or is painful today, okay? So lymph nodes are non-tender. I'm also going to check his TMJ, open and close your mouth. And I have no clicking, no grinding feeling. Awesome. Mr. Hoskins, let me know if that's tender. Frontal and maxillary sinuses are non-tender. His face is symmetrical. His head is normal cephalic. He um, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna palpate your throat. Um, can you swallow? Awesome. So there's no enlargement or masses on his thyroid. And then can you shrug your shoulders for me? Good. And then um, move your head up and down, side to side, and touch your ear to your shoulder. All right. And then press against my hand, and press against my hand, and press against my hand. Awesome. And then I'm going to have you close your eyes. Can you feel that? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay. 
patients, um, cranial nerves 5, 7, 10, and 11 are intact. And we're going to start with the eyes. So his eyelashes, his eye um, brows are all evenly distributed. And he has white sclera, glossy with pink conjunctiva, no lid leg, no ptosis, no discharge or swelling, no redness. I'm going to have you look over my shoulder and I'm gonna shine my pen light in your eye, okay? Keep an eye, look at my pen. Okay. I would also have my patient perform a uh, visual acute disease test, uh, preferably the Snellen test. And if that was okay, his it would show that his cranial nerve two, three, four, and six are intact. And we're gonna take a look at his ears next. So there appears to be no lesions, no discharge, no swelling from the ear. His external meatus looks clear and unblocked. And Mr. Hoskins, um, do you have any hearing or um, visual or hearing or dizziness problems? Nope. Awesome. And you don't wear glasses, do you? Nope. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a whisper or a rub test. I'm going to make a sound like this. I'm going to put it behind your head and you tell, raise your hand on the side that you hear it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, we're going to move to the nose. So nose is midline, symmetrical, a little peak up and above. No discharge, swelling, redness, um, and no deviated septum. Perfect. And then I would have my patient smell something like coffee. What is this? Awesome. Cranial nerve one is intact. We're going to go work through the mouth and the throat now. So lips are slightly dry, but pink. Can you open your mouth? Um, stick out, stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Buccal mucosa is pink. Stick out your tongue. Say ah. Uh. Say ah. Uh. All right, I'm checking for dental caries. I'm checking for cracked or missing teeth and looking at his hard palate. Can you um, stick out your tongue and move it side to side? Awesome. All right, so uvula is midline and rises. Um, no signs of infection in the pharynx and um, tongue has motions, proper motions. Can you smell for me? All right, cranial nerves 9, 10, and 12 are intact. All right, Mr. Hoskins, I'm going to take a look at your lung sounds. Can you please take off your shirt and I'm gonna have you um, just sit initially and then we'll have you lie down for your... Patients um, has no visible sternal uh, abnormalities. He is not using any accessory muscle usage for breathing. I'm going to um, hold my hands on here. Can you breathe? It's equal rise or equal expand, chest expansion. I'm going to have you listen. I'm going to listen to your uh, lung sounds and I would like you just to breathe a little deeply, but not too much if you don't get lightheaded. Okay. I'll start up here. Go ahead. Patient has um, clear lobes in all five lobes, no advent adventitious um, breath sounds. I'm going to have you cross your arms and lean your hands on your um, knees. I'm going to check his back. His spine is straight, no lordosis, no kyphosis. Take a big breath in, equal chest right, um, expansion. 
I'm also going to have all this in in the back. Breathe in. No adventitious breath sounds in the posterior. Okay. Next, I'm gonna have you lay down, Mr. Hoskins. We're gonna do your cardiovascular assessment. So I'm gonna listen to your heart sounds, okay? Just because I'm listening to something for a long time doesn't mean that there's anything wrong, okay? So I'm going to first listen to S1 and S2 in all five locations with the bell or excuse me, the diaphragm of my stethoscope. We're gonna start at the aortic region, which is at the second intercostal space at the right sternal border. And then we're gonna move to the pulmonic region, which is the second intercostal space left sternal border. And I'm moving down to the herbs point, which is the third intercostal space, left sternal border. S1 and S2 can be heard uh, most equally here. S2 is louder in the prior two. Then we're gonna move down to the tricuspid valve, which is at the fourth or fifth intercostal space, left sternal border, depending on the book you read. S1 can be heard here. And then we're going to be listening to the mitral valve, which is mitral region, which is mid clavicular line. This is also the point of maximal impulse or the apical impulse. And we would listen here for a minute. I can also check carotid artery to see if S1 coincides with S1 or if his pulse coincides with S1. Next, I'm going to listen with my dia or my bell to all the same locations. We're listening for murmurs, which is a swooshing or a um, blowing sound. All sounds are normal. I'm going to palpate crowded pulse. One side at a time. I'm also going to listen for a brewy, which is a blowing or a swishing sound. No breweries present. All right, and have you experienced any chest pain or tightness or anything? No. Okay, awesome. Next, we're gonna go into the, um, the <coughs> abdominal um, gastro, gastrointestinal. So uh, with this, I'm going to first listen to the aortic, um, abdominal aorta, and I'm gonna listen for a brewy here as well. and no brewery present, and I'm gonna listen to all four quadrants. I'm listening for five to 45 sounds. If I want to document absent vowel sounds, I need to listen to each quadrant uh, five times, or excuse me, five minutes. Bowel sounds are present. Um, I did note that my patient has a flat abdomen, um, no uh, obvious masses, hernias, or anything like that. I'm going to next palpate um, my patient's abdomen. Mr. Hoskins, do you have um, normal bowel movements? 
And what was the last time you had a bowel movement? This morning. Okay, and is that usually every day? Yep. And no issues or running your hard stools? Nope. Okay, and how about urinating? Have you had any issues like stopping and, and starting? Um, pain when you urinate? And no weird colors? Awesome. If I had a female patient, I would also ask her the same questions, but I would also include whether or not um, she is on her period or had not on her period, but has had a period or a menstrual cycle. All right. Next, we're going to do the peripheral vascular system. So what I'm going to be doing is checking for pulses. I'm always looking for equal, um, equally bilateral pulses and two plus is optimal. And we're going to look for radial pulse. Radial pulses are present um, bilaterally. And then we're gonna look for brachial pulse. This guy's a little meaty, so. Radial pulses are present. And again, no signs of edema. And then we would check for femoral pulses, which is the mid inguinal, inguinal point. And pulses are present, popliteal pulse, which is in the popliteal fossa. Got some tight tendons back there. Those are present bilaterally, posterior, posterior tibialis. Present one plus, and then dorsalis pedis. Dorsalis pedis. And then, can you wiggle your toes for me, Mr. Hoskins? And then, what toe am I touching? The big one. And here. Small one. Can you wiggle your fingers? Okay. And what finger am I touching? The one. All right. And how about this one? Right here. Awesome. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to be doing a musculoskeletal skeletal assessment. Mr. Hoskins, you can sit up and you can put your shirt back on if you'd like. Awesome. I'm just gonna, we have just a few more things left to do. So I might want you to follow what I do. So I want your arms out and then rotate them up and back. Fingers up, fingers down. All right, go above your head behind your back, beautiful, and then back up like this. I'm going to give you resistance. I want you to push or pull against whatever I'm giving you. So push out, in, forward, back, beautiful. So range of motion for upper, major, and minor joints um, are is exceptional, and strength is five out of five. I want you to kick your leg out for me, beautiful. Point your toes, flex your toes back, Okay, put it down, same thing. Flex your toes, point your toes up. Beautiful, put your legs down. I'm gonna push against you, pull. Okay, push against your toes and push down against my hand. Awesome. Um, two more tests. I want you to get up. I'm gonna have you walk down and back. And come back. Good. So gait is uh, of no concern. He's got balance, no issues. His lower leg extremity is um, the range of motion is exceptional with a five out of five on strength. And I just have the last test, which is, um, what were those three words? Cat ball dog. Yes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Cat ball. Sad. Sad. Good job. All right. So I'm going to perform hand hygiene again. I'm going to thank Mr. Hoskins for, um, coming in. I'm going to make sure that my patient's bed is in the lowest locked position, that the side rails are up, and that there's a call light or a way to get a hold of me if needed. Mr. Hoskins, is there anything else I can get for you before the doctor comes in? Nope. Good. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.